we were talking about lifetime achievement. Her greatest legacy are three young people that she calls children and they call her mom. And there's no greater legacy than you can have than your youngins. Dr. Marilyn Faye Chipman. We Cry Freedom, the Honorable William Bill Roberts Lifetime Achievement Award, presented on the second day of February of 2019 to Dr. Marilyn Faye Chipman. In fact, when she realized it was named after the Honorable Bill Roberts, she cried. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, thank you and congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We're honored to have you with us today. My pleasure. So one of my questions for you, because I was reading your, your short bio that my husband has here, <laughs> and I saw that you were awarded seven scholarships to go to college. Seven. Oh my goodness. Seven scholarships. <laughs> so it, it appears that you went in sociology, psychology. Mm -hmm. Those were going to be my majors in school, I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> and then you left that field and decided to teach. I have such a passion for people that want to teach, that want to make an election, decide to be in the classroom. Help us understand, what, what was that strain of thought? How did you move, change careers like that and decide that this is where you were supposed to be? Well, may I please start simply by saying thank you to the committee for giving me this honor uh, to be seated in this chair at this moment. And I'm appreciative also to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I am a proud graduate of Manuel High School, Ooh. class of 59. Yes, I was honored to receive seven scholarships upon my graduation uh, from there. Woo! I had been raised by a single mother in, of five children in deep poverty, but the teachers at Manuel High School yeah! never, <laughs> never let us believe that we were not capable of success. So with my mother saying, it's not that we're poor, it's just that we don't have any money. <laughs> There's a difference there. Uh, and with the teachers saying, well, yes, we are looked down upon by North, South, East, and West high schools, but we are proud manual. I said, well, I will demand excellence from you regardless. Amen. So that is how I was able to receive seven scholarships to go on to college. Uh, graduated from the University of Denver with a degree in sociology and psychology. And my very brief bio, <laughs> which I looked at and thought, Okay, it it's all right, good. it's good. <laughs> uh, it, it did reveal that I went off into social work because of having been raised in poverty myself. Mm. I wanted to do something because my mother struggled. There were no food Ooh. stamps, there Ooh. were no rent vouchers. We ate what we could find and we lived where we could. And I wanted to help other women who were in that same situation. But then I married this tall, dark, handsome man from Arkansas. Ooh, 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 ooh. And when the, the first of our children were born, I began uh, volunteering in their classrooms. And I was just stunned. I could not believe the energy and the excitement of watching little children learn. I did not want to be a teacher because my older brother had me grading his papers for him. I thought, I'll never do this for my life. But then I, bec I became so interested in education. So the part of the, of the bio that is not printed is that in September of last year, I retired after 45 wow. years as a teacher. <laughs> 14 of those years were in the public schools, okay. 31 years as a university professor. Woo! 
BA in psychology, the master's degree in early childhood education, and the doctorate degree in educational curriculum and instruction from the University of Denver. And I thank God for all of it. Amen. So I take it you've probably seen a lot. <laughs> Um, from the students and their parents, their families. What's part of the solution as far as our education system and, and closing the achievement gap? What can we do as a community to help that next generation that you, you've helped so many uh, in this educational career field? What's our part? How, how do we play a part in helping? I think actually that we have heard that very question answered, have we not? Yes. From the young people, mm -hmm. uh, the, young, the young teenage girl there who's making all these records is saying that even as a teenager, she's already found the way to help to bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. I've heard people who are 30 and 40 years old and hey, I am looking at 80, all right? Just give me a couple more birthdays and I will be there at 80. And so I think across the generations, it's not just one group of people who's, who is capable and responsible for bridging the gap, but all of us have to work together. Let me say this. I feel that, to, to quote my beautiful daughter-in-law, Susie, who is married to that handsome man with the camel right there, my second son. Yes, my second son. <laughs> uh, you know, to quote her, God gave us all a purpose and I, came to conclude in my role as a university professor, I have written numerous letters. I, I have lost track of the letters that I have written to help young people get scholarships, to help other people make career changes, mm -hmm. to help people to get admitted to graduate school, to doctoral programs, to, to their profession. Did the readers of those lessons know me? Mm. Of course not. Mm. It was the ability to sign comma PhD behind my name and the letterhead on which it was written that opened the door. Yes. So it's not about you. This is what Susie was saying. It's not about you. It was never about me. Mm. But it was simply about the fact that God had positioned me Preach, Mom. in such yeah. a way that Preach, I could Mom. write letters that just people the readers of the letter might have been at the university somewhere yeah. but it was because of, of, of the what shall I say wow. what, what it carried behind it and so I say to any one of you there you whatever it is being a beautiful guardian angel mm -hmm. being whatever it is use your position to help someone yeah. I know that you are there contrary to what says. She said that people just work because work is what they want to do. We also work for a paycheck, right? <laughs> we also work for a paycheck. But in working for your paycheck that you cash every month, be sure to remember I'm in this position also because God ordained me to help somebody else to come along. I have been blessed. I don't know if this is going to be your third question or your last, but let me just say this. Let me say this. Let me stop. I, I, uh, who was it who said they pay me to do what I, Silka, Silka. Silka Hansen, said they pay you to do what you love to do. I could not believe when they, when I was hired as a university professor, I thought it would only be to teach, which is what I wanted to do, DNA, teach. But then the door opened for international travel, for writing, for writing a college textbook, for, for traveling here and there, speaking at conferences nationwide, coast to coast, border to border, and then internationally. The Lord has blessed me to speak at conferences in London, mm. in Germany, mm. in Singapore, in Hong Kong, Woo. in wow. British Columbia, in wow. Jamaica. Woo. Of all of those conferences where I have been blessed to speak, the one that impacted me the most was in Jamaica. Mm. You think, oh, it's a resort. We went there to just lay out by the beach. Mm. It was the International Conference on Urban Education, mm. where people from all different nations around the world mm -hmm. who teach in urban settings came together to discuss the problems. It was then and only then, and this was just in 2014, four years ago, five years ago. It was then that I realized that all of these commonalities exist in urban areas globally. 
And you know what they're all related to? Cultural diversity. Mm. Racial issues. Yeah. You say, oh no, well, how could there be racial conflict in mm. Hong Kong? There is. Mm. Okay. Anytime any group of people thinks that they are better than another group of people, yeah. you have conflict. That's right. And so That's to right. see that how a nationwide teachers were having to deal with the same issues that we have here in Denver, Colorado. Mm. Do, can I just say, raise your hand if you're a teacher. Raise your hand if you're a teacher. Every hand should have gone up. Oh, yeah. Everybody's hand should have gone up. Because all of you are teaching somebody somewhere to do something. Do your job and do it well. Because to be a teacher is a high calling. In Oh